Hi, third graders, welcome back. We are gonna do a little more reading out of the case of the gasping garbage. And hopefully you are able to access this book. You should have connected through Google Classroom to that Realize Reader app. So you need to do that if you haven't already to make sure you can read these books because uh, probably next week I won't be reading them to you. You're gonna have to be reading on your own. So make sure you are connected and you can get to this book. We're gonna talk a little bit today uh, more on how characters' actions contribute to what happens in the story, the sequence of events. And remember, we're gonna be writing a personal narrative and we need to have sequence of events in that as well. So be thinking about that. Today's chapter, we're gonna learn a little bit more about another character. We're gonna to get to know them a little bit better. And I want you to be thinking about problems and solutions, how we can uh, identify those, the characters can, and how they can fix that. So let's take a look at chapter five. This one is called A Dark Day. It was a fine day for measuring tadpoles. In fact, that's exactly what Nell Fossey was doing at her desk when the phone rang. She set aside the chart she was plotting and told her tadpoles to take a break. Doyle and Fossey, she answered, it was Drake. Now, breaking news, turn your TV to channel five. Check. She clicked on the TV. A local news reporter was talking. We've got a situation here, a real situation, a desperate situation. As you can see behind me, a truck is wedged under the bridge. Plainly, it was just too tall and now it's stuck. No traffic can get through. And if that isn't bad enough, it's rush hour. That means people are coming and going to and from work. Drivers are getting cranky. As you can hear, horns are honking and it's miles and miles to go around. Like I said, it's a desperate situation for the town of Mossy Lake. Nell turned off the TV. What do you suggest? This is a chance for Doyle and Fossey. With our superior mental powers, we should have that truck out in a flash. Meet me at the bridge. Check. Click. 20 minutes later. Ooh, that's showing me passage of time, right? Those are temporal words. 20 minutes later. Surrounded by the sound of honking horns and the shouts of angry drivers, Nell and Drake pushed through the crowd that surrounded the truck. Stand back, kids, said a police officer. Let the professionals do their jobs. Nell handed the officer their business card. Doyle and Fossey, she said, at your service. Oh, of course, Miss Fossey. Didn't recognize you at first. My apologies. The officer lifted the yellow tape barrier and Nell and Drake entered the scene. I wonder, she handed him their business card, right? He stopped them and then he realized, oh yes, I know who you are. I'm gonna let you in. I wonder why he let them in. Think about that. Let's look at the picture for a moment. You can tell that here's the top of that truck and it's stuck in there. This looks like the truck driver sitting there waiting. There's his lunch pail. It says low clearance. That means there's not a lot of room to clear that space. See the back of his truck. Here's that police tape. Here's Nell and Drake, a couple police officers. Ooh, then there's this character here. We don't quite know who that is. Look at his face compared to their faces. They were firefighters, engineers, and news crews. They were politicians, truck drivers, and the mayor. They stood on the bridge. They climbed the ladders. They peered under the truck with flashlights. They held meetings. All in all, everyone seemed quite puzzled indeed. Nell set to work immediately, she observed. She measured, she calculated, she charted, she scratched her head. Meanwhile, Drake was calculating the height of the truck and scribbling in his lab notebook. So I'm noticing, right, they're taking a lot of information down, a lot of data. Finally, Drake and Nell held a small meeting of their own. What do you think, Nell asked. Drake shook his head and pushed up his glasses. It's jammed in tight. They've already tried to drive it out but it just wedges in farther. Nell nodded. Plus, they've tried pulling it with a tow truck from the other side. They've even tried greasing it, 
streak continued, but no go. To be perfectly honest, scientist now, I'm stumped. Simply stumped. Me too. This is a dark day for Doyle and Fossey. A dark day indeed, now agreed. Just then, as if being stumped weren't bad enough, they spied James Frank Frisco, the bad, mad scientist, their arch rival. Oh, we know what that means, right? That's not good. Do you suppose this is James Frisco? Let's look. Oh, he's got a name tag on and it says Frisco. E gads, cried Drake, nearly dropping his notebook. It's Frisco. They watched in horror as Frisco climbed all over the truck. Unfortunately for Doyle and Fossey, Frisco was allowed to go anywhere he liked and climb over anything he wished because he was the police commissioner's son. Mad scientist or not, sometimes life was perfectly unfair. Frisco peered under the hood. He checked the brakes. He squinted through the windshield. He recorded the mileage. He scribbled in his lab notebook. And then he dashed away. Great Scott, exclaimed Drake. He's gone back to his lab for final analysis. Drake turned to Nell. We must solve the problem before Frisco does. Our reputation is at stake. Your reputation is what people think about you. Back at the beginning, right on that first page, Remember the police officer wouldn't let them through and then they handed him the card and he was like, oh, sure, here you go. You may go through because they have a good reputation, right? They're trustworthy and people know that. So they're worried now. Their reputation is at stake. Agreed. I have an idea that just might work, said Drake. Oh, I'm going to raise the bridge using hot air balloons. Now was quiet, real quiet. There was something not quite right here. Something she couldn't quite put her finger on. It was that sixth scientific sense that all good scientists have. We must return to the lab, Drake's, Drake was saying, for final analysis. Then we'll present our findings to the mayor and oversee the extraction operation. To extract something means to take it out. Kind of like when you go to the dentist, sometimes they have to extract a tooth. Assuming there are no complications, we'll be home by supper. You go, Nell finally said. I'm going to stay here, just in case. Drake thought for a moment. Good idea. I'll watch the TV, and if anything happens, I'll hurry right back. Check. Later. The next chapter, chapter six, is simply stumped. So we're going to have to wait until tomorrow to see how they're going to solve this problem. But were you paying attention to... The, the problem in the story and the characters, right? They haven't solved it yet. But I noticed that Drake and Nell were writing down things in their notebook and they're gonna go back to the lab. So was Frisco, but we don't know anything about the information he was writing down. I want you to be thinking about these characters, right? We talked a little bit yesterday about Evan from location, location, location how they kind of might be alike in their motivations or they might be different in the motivations. I want you to be thinking about Nell and Drake and their character traits. What are they like on the inside? Thinking about how they're alike, thinking about how they're a little bit different. Today's assignment, you're gonna to get to prove your thinking. Remember, once you type on your uh, assignment, don't forget, save it, check that it's saved before you turn it in.